good morning friends now this is a series of lectures for you visible spectroscopy of tybc analytical chemistry pattern semester 5 2019 pattern now we have learned already about the u visible spectroscopy what are the instrumentation what is the principle what are the working principle what are the different constructions uh, employed in u visible spectroscopy what are the basic instrumentation what are their parts uh belonging to u is your spectroscopy now here in this lecture we are going to learn the applications of colorimetry and spectrophotometry what are the applications of spectrophotometry and colorimetry now here simple principle as we have already studied that colored substance are used to uh, measure the intensity of transmitted light now on account of that intensity the concentration of the substance that can be determined with the help of colorimetry and spectrophotometry so this is the principle of colorimetry and spectrophotometry now here the first application is that boron uh, boron in steel now boron uh, always uh, you can say uh, boron is used in steel manufacturing because boron provides the strength in to the steel so boron is useful for the steel now if we if we want to uh, identify or if we, if we want to uh, recognize the uh, whether the boron is present in steel or not or you can say if we want to quantitatively estimate the boron in steel at that time quantitative estimation is nothing but the how much amount is present in the particular sample that we are going to determine quantitatively quantitative estimation is nothing but the how much amount of particular sample is present that is nothing but the quantitative estimation so boron in steel that can be determined with the help of colorimetry and spectrophotometry in this regard boron in steel can be estimated as colorimetric determination for methyl borate dry residue using dianthamide reagent so dianthamide reagent is useful for the estimation of boron so this reagent converts the boron to methyl borate which is nothing but the dry dry residue and uh, uh, this dry dry residue is spectrophotometrically or sorry colorimetrically estimated now second application is chromium in steel now similar to boron in steel that is chromium in steel that can be also identified chromium in steel can be estimated as a colorimetric determination using diphenyl carboxide reagent so the reagents are very useful because why uh, the reagents provide the uh, uh, colored analyte Uh, to the colorimetry so chromium in steel can be estimated as colorimetric determination using diphenyl carboxide reagent the third application of uh, colorimetry and spectrophotometry is that ammonia in water so ammonia in water uh, uh, that can be estimated using colorimetry and spectrophotometry ammonia in water can be estimated as a colorimetric determination using nessler's reagent so nessler's reagent is useful for the determination of ammonia in water fourth application is chloride the colorimetric determination for chloride procedure involves the mercury to chloride analyte method so mercury chloride analyte method is useful for the determination of uh, estimation of chloride colorimetrically fourth point is that primary amine diazotization and naphthaquinone method in coordination with colorimetric method is used for primary amine so primary amine is nothing but the two hydrogens are uh, okay so one hydrogen is replaceable and two hydrogens are uh, present at the periphery of nitrogen atom so diazotization diazotization or okay so diazotization so diazotization and uh, naphthaquinone method is useful for the determination of uh, primary amine colorimetrically next one spectrophotometric titration if you take the example of uh, estimation of copper 2 plus uh, with the help of pdta that is ethylene diamond tetraacetic acid complex so spectrophotometric uh, titrations are useful for the uh, determination of metal ion from the complex by using the complexing agent next one is uh, determination of phenol now this method can be applied uh, to the most phenols so substituted to the ortho uh, and uh, mm, meta position and traces of phenol that can be estimated with the help of uh, uh, this method 
so determination of phenol is useful for uh, is, uh, is useful because traces of phenol that can be uh, traces of phenol that can be identified uh, by this method colorimetrically for this uh, purpose for amino phenol that can be employed as a reagent now determination of pka value of indicator so pka value of indicator that can be estimated using jobs method so jobs method is useful for the uh, for this determination so uh, with the help of colorimetric uh, method we uh, determine the pka value of indicator now the last one is that <coughs> determination of composition of metal complexes so metal com uh, complexes has the composition and this complexes uh, composition of metal complexes can be studied with the help of colorimetric titration so this is all about the applications of the uh, colorimetry and spectrophotometry now here uh, one point is that this this is a, uh, this is another application but th these applications are not in details so only uh, you can say the regions are given only information is given and only baseline or you can say basic sentence of the application is given so with this content i conclude this lecture thank you very much for patience listening